Hi everyone, this is Ian from Validate. Today we're going to be talking about 5G core network testing and emulation. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the challenges, the solution that we offer, the architecture, show a live demo, and then wrap up. Some of the current testing challenges for 5G include you know, the fact that in order to test a base station or any kind of 5G network node, uh, you need some way to wrap around that and provide a core network or some parts of that. Uh, the kinds of use cases that we see are testing for reliability, for security, performance. Uh, we also run into customers that need to be able to demonstrate something at a trade show or for investors or, or other clients. Uh, they need a customizable research environment, so a way to kind of play around, get familiar with the 5G protocols over you know, 4G and some of the older things that they might be more familiar with. Um, but, you know, testing and emulation in this way can be quite costly. Um, so, you know, the choices so far have been either purchase a deployable, pretty expensive core, or try to build one yourself and, and, and figure out perhaps open source or other bits and pieces bolted together. Uh, but then also you have the, the challenge of how do you perhaps include that alongside 4G or other technologies, including IMS. So for our architecture, what we've done at Validate, we've implemented a reference emulation based on the standards. So we have the each individual node standalone. It can run in a separate uh, VM or it can run on a combined environment or on hardware as well. So we can do the full software emulation. We can also do just parts of it. We can wrap around specific nodes. We can do a functional test, a conformance, or a load test for any of these interfaces and any of these nodes. So what we're going to show today is the, um, the, the UE connecting to the, the network um, and then setting up a, a data session and just looking at the tool around that scenario. It can be deployed in a cloud or lab environment, including OpenStack, VMware. Uh, we, as I mentioned, have a realistic emulation of the network. We'll see that in, in Wireshark, which we're going to be running alongside it. Um, and it's, it's really easy to deploy and, and very configurable and flexible. All right, so let's look at the demo. It's a web-based application, so you can select your configuration file either through the UI. We also have a, a RESTful API, so you can bypass the UI completely and, and just use that to, to launch applications and launch configurations. So what this is doing then is instancing um, each one of these components in a slightly different um, you know, VM. We have up to seven. If we look under manage, we'll see there's actually seven VMs. And um, you know, these, are, these are across different machines in our, in our network. Now, if I look at the running application now that it's loaded, um, we can see the, the different applications, you know, UPF, Gino B, UE, IMS server, or so on. And each one of these are represented here with a little green LED showing that it's active and running. Now, one of the very cool features is you can actually edit any one of these nodes and make changes. As the specs are changing, it's quite useful to be able to go in and edit some of the, um, some of the, the code if you need to. Um, you know, so that's, done by, by the edit button. Um, there's also, you know, so each one of these nodes has a slightly different UI depending on its, its purpose or what it can, what it can do. Uh, so if we look at the UE, we can pull up an MSC and this will show a arrow diagram representing the full call flow. So it's pretty detailed call flow obviously between all the different active nodes from UE Gino B all the way through um, the different parts of the network. <coughs> Okay, so as we can see in Wireshark, we've got some startup signaling as we connected. We were showing some SCTP between Gino B, A, and F. Um, we've got some internal messaging, some coordination messaging that we do uh, as well. So we can see the NGAP uh, setup request message went through and got a response. So this is equivalent to the uh, 4G uh, setup request, setup response. Very similar. Instead of an Eno BID, you've got a Gino BID and so on. So all this is completely configurable. If you want to set very specific network IDs, you can. You can mimic certain you know, uh, country codes and, and network operator codes if you need to emulate that. 
Okay, so once that's done, we have a, a, a sort of a companion um, UI that can be application specific. In this case, we've got two um, soft phones representing, uh, you know, um, just UEs that are attaching to the network. Uh, we can do a, a, um, a network scan, and I'll just make that a little, a little bigger. You can attach to the network, and we should start to see some, some signaling in here. Um, so here we see the registration request, identity authentication, um, and, and then you can you know, run a certain type of test. Um, so what we're, what we're um, showing here is, is gonna be some you know, SIP registration. Um, so this is sending a, a SIP register through the GTP tunnel. Uh, so this is, you know, in a stateful way, we can, you can send any kind of traffic, you can set up calls, um, you can do HTTP traffic, IoT traffic, whatever it might be. But what, we, what we're showing here then is that will go through the complete network. And uh, if, you know, we have a IMS server that we're gonna show that in a separate demo, but the point is you can, you can make end-to-end -end, uh, calls through and, uh, you know, have all that um, seen in detail inside of, of Wireshark at different network points. Um, so what we also can show is um, a, we have a Grafana um, plugin here. So you can look at each individual node, say at the GNB level, how many setup requests, setup responses. Um, we can look at some of the timings, right? So this is all configurable as well. You can add other metrics at each of the nodes if you want to. Um, and that's our dashboard. Uh, under report, we have, um, you know, different, um, you know, packet counts of how many authentication requests, successfuls that we receive. If we're doing end-to-end -end media, so we can do a polka pesk type test across the media if we, if you want to, um, and that would have these, um, you know, CDR metrics shown as well. Um, that's not active in this demo, but we can we can do that too. Um, so that's that's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show was uh, under tools, we have the API log. So as I mentioned earlier, for every button press you do, you can grab that as a, as a REST API command. So by looking at the report, we can copy that report um, message and, um, and put that into automation. Um, so each one of the nodes has a, a program selected and how much you know, details, like percentage of traffic that's gonna do. Um, and uh, you know, that can be automated through, our, through say Python framework or others. So by clicking on here, you can see Python, you can see various other um, you know, languages that you can pull that command down into. All right, well, that's the um, overview. Um, just to wrap up after the demo here. Um, so we have, shown the, um, the, the 5G core network running. So, you know, because it can be a costly exercise, the core network emulator from Validate can give you a flexible, cost-effective way of, of uh, you know, running this kind of environment for testing, saving resources, time and money. Um, it's flexible, it's adaptable, it's fully editable. So you can change the core flows, you can change the templates, protocols, and it interworks with 4G and, and 3G. If you'd like to find out more, please go to validate.com slash 5GC and uh, learn more. Thank you very much.